Well, the big story today, friends with benefits. Good afternoon to you. My name is Dylan Radigan. Nice to be seeing you here from Midtown. A little bit of rain, but it's okay. On Monday of this week, we wrote a Huffington Post blog about the two different types of Americans. Either you're a big business special interest or big union special interest, as it may case may be, who can buy your way to platinum citizenship, or you're the other 99% of America. And just today, a new congressional report shows precisely mathematically just how true that is the report cites rampant and widespread conflict of interest inside of the federal reserve undermining its credibility as a custodian of america's currency and america's capital this is the first audit ever of the controversial and unorthodox tools that the fed used during the financial crisis to cover up the bank's problems and perpetuate a too big to fail system with a dark casino-based swaps market. Why should we care? Well, because the group of people doing this are appointed, unelected, elite, platinum citizens who are exploiting our nation's economy and our nation's currency to preserve their own interests, mind you, unchecked when it comes to power. They are not part of our three branches of government, if you will. If you need an example of their abuse of power, here's one. The, the audit report exposed today the following. 18 current and former Fed board members who held the top spots at the same banks and companies that were given emergency loans from the Fed. So the same people were saying, you better do what we say or else, the same platinum citizens threatening America in 2008 continue to do that at the expense of students, retirees, the unemployed, and every other non-platinum citizen. And because of how the Fed works, there's no transparency as to how they do this, obviously. The more with this we see, the harder it'll be to perpetuate the Tim Geithner-led platinum citizenship plan. So those trillions in bad ap assets that the Fed, you and me, were the Fed, bought during the bailout from the banks who had bonus themselves creating it, still largely secret. The only thing we do know is that the American taxpayer now owns them. Remember, the final barrier to ending this culture of platinum citizenship that really began at the outset of America, and we've watched it, through the original rejection of slavery, into the rejection of women as property, into the rejection of the youth uh, as having no voice, even though we're willing to send them to war and have them get killed uh, with an amendment that dropped us to 18. Well, we are seeing that the final division in America is not race, it is not age, it is not gender. It is economic status relative to the platinum citizenship plan that is being run on behalf of bankers at the Federal Reserve. We start now with a privilege, a chance to speak to the man who got us the first glimpse inside of the Federal Reserve, Bernie Sanders, Senator from Vermont. It was your amendment, uh, Senator Sanders, that even yielded this little sliver of information about the 18 Fed members bailing themselves out uh, at the same time that they were at the Federal Reserve. Are you pleased or satisfied with the information? Would you like to see more? Well, I think it's a start. And what it tells us, uh, according to the GAO, is that there are very serious conflicts of interest. Look, the Fed is the institution, maybe the most powerful agency of the United States government. And their job, among other things, is to regulate Wall Street. Well, the truth of the matter is, it is people from the huge financial institutions who sit on the Fed boards that are regulating themselves. Uh, that may make sense to somebody, Dylan, but it doesn't make sense to me. And what the report documents that in a number of instances, people who sit on these Fed boards and also are high-ranking officials at financial institutions have been able to get programs and financial assistance from the Fed to their own financial uh, institutions. That is, to my mind, a real conflict of interest. 
Interestingly, central banks in Australia, Canada, the UK, EU must disclose potential conflicts of interest by law. The Fed does not. Central bank directors in the EU, Australia, must annually disclose all their financial interests. We do not have that law. Australia's central bank prohibits its directors from working for or having a material financial interest in private financial institutions located in its country. We do not. Uh, many directors own stock or work directly for the banks that are supervised. How is it that we've come to accept a level of conflict of interest that the entire Western world would reject uh, on its face? Well, Dylan, I think that's a great question. And I think what we have to say now is enough is enough. Now, from my perspective, uh, having offered this provision that got us this information, this is just the beginning. Uh, what I intend to be doing is working with economists and the general public to begin sitting down and say, what kind of structure should we have on the Fed so that it reflects the needs of ordinary Americans and not just a Wall Street and the big financial institutions. Yeah. Uh, now, with that said, uh, as you probably know, the Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke uh, yesterday was speaking up in Boston, and he referred specifically uh, to this technique where the Federal Reserve will secretly purchase whatever the bank is selling in order to bail them out. And here's what he said about it. He said, listen, uh, these can be valuable even when the zero bound is not relevant, referring to the interest rates, uh, rock bottom rates at zero percent, which is screwing over all the retirees, among other people. Uh, and he says, and I expect to see increasing use of, use of such tools in the future. And before we go any further, uh, one of the proudest things that I've done, believe it or not, Senator Sanders, since I've been at MSNBC, is a segment explaining how this works. And if you'll indulge me, I want to, for everybody's benefit to play about 30 seconds of what exactly these special secret Fed tools are and, and, and basically what you're doing to help us solve it. Take a look at this. I'm the bank. I'm suddenly holding... A pile of garbage, okay? Nice. I'm going to bring it under the table. But the economy can't function if I can't get money for my garbage. So the Federal Reserve, using taxpayer money, basically becomes a goodwill store for the bank. We now want to know what's in this garbage bag, because this garbage bag represents the risk of the future of this country. Really if, this is, if this is worth 13 point, no, no, don't tell anybody. The Fed doesn't want anybody to know. That's not. That's not Say a let secret. The know? No, no. He's, uh, he wants to know. I want to know. Why we do you want to? Know? Why do you want to know what's in this bag? Well, so I, why is it so important I, to America? I want to know if there's anything in there that is worth the money you've been given. And that really is the question, Senator, is we have been giving money to banks in exchange for garbage bags full of empty receipts. And Elliot Spitzer, myself, Bill Black, and countless others in this country want to know whether we have been giving banks our money in exchange for worthless garbage. Well, I think that's an absolutely fair question. I think the other issue that we've got to focus on is the structure of the Fed itself. Uh, as I said, does it make any sense for the people who are regulating the banks to be the bankers themselves? I don't think so. Uh, we got another, prov another provision, uh, Dylan, in Dodd-Frank, which revealed the fact that during the financial crisis, $16 trillion dollars in very, very low interest loans went out to every financial institution in this country and central banks all over the world, as well as corporations in America and wealthy individuals. Who made that decision and who is today not making the decision that small businesses all over this country who are starved for affordable loans can't get them? Why isn't the Fed helping small business the way they help Wall Street? Bottom line is, Fed is an enormously powerful agency. B, very few people have a clue about how the Fed operates. Three, there are very obvious conflicts of interest between the people who sit on the Fed, who are bankers themselves, and the transactions that they undertake. Fourth, now is the time for us to have a national discussion about real reform of the Fed so that it works for everybody and not just Wall Street. Do you not need to pressure both the Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner, who has been very resistant to this, as well as the Department of Justice and Eric Holder, who has been very resistant? I mean, those seem to be the two people that uh, I would want to talk to. Well, we'll talk to them. Of course, we'll talk to them. Uh, but the bottom line is, as you well know, Wall Street is the most powerful uh, and, in my view, dangerous entity uh, in the United States of America today. They are powerful economically. They are extremely powerfully politically. They contribute huge amounts of money in campaign contributions and in lobbying. Uh, right now, the top six financial entities 
have assets the equivalent to 65% of the GDP of the United States. So this change ain't going to come easy. You're taking on the most powerful people in the world. But I think that is the job that we have got to undertake. And that would seem to be, if you look at the history of amendments and this sort of uh, tasks of this magnitude, it will only be if everybody, this is not a left-right issue, this will, you can only assert power on this level if you do it all together all at once. Is that not correct? Absolutely. We're going to need a real grassroots movement. To be, and, and you're beginning to see it. I mean, this is what this occupying Wall Street is about, is saying enough is enough. These guys on Wall Street have enormous power. They have done terrible destruction to our country. They've got to be held accountable. Uh, and uh, I think you have to add the Fed to uh, institutions that have got to be accountable. Yeah. And this all goes back to if we eliminate the auction process, the amount of power any industry has, whether it's the banks, or this, that's where this amendment that we're talking about all the time comes from. Well, you, you know every day there are articles being written about the amount of money that Wall Street is contributing to this candidate or that candidate, the incredible power of their lobbyists, the fact that they spent $5 billion over a 10-year period to get deregulated to lead us to where we are right now. So these guys are very, very powerful, and it will take a very significant grassroots movement to take them on effectively. Uh, I suspect, uh, Senator, that that's precisely what's developing, uh, whether it's, the, the, I think it's bigger than the occupation. The, the, the American people understand this. It, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's get money out or the occupation or anything else. Uh, there's 50 organizations that are all seeing the same thing. And as long as we all go to the same place when this is all said and done, I think it'll get fixed. Uh, thank you for your leadership, Senator. Thank you very much.